Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel Faith again, uh, your favorite HR buddy. Okay, uh, this is a very random, spontaneous video. I had made a tweet saying that if I wanted to do a spontaneous video about anything, what should it be about? And about three, four, five responses mentioned women's football. So a bit of background is this. My cinematography friend came to visit me. We had to work on another project entirely. And we felt since he's here, we should shoot a YouTube video. The problem is that I do not have a YouTube content ready. So I had to think of something spontaneously. So when I saw women's football, women's football, women's football, I'm like, yeah, let's talk about it. So because this is spontaneous, I do not have structure, but I would sort of give a kind of structure to this. So I'm going to start about how I got into women's football, why women's football, where women's football is right now, um, talk about a big project I'm working on and, you know, ask the people for money so you come and invest in our brand. So, are you ready? This is where you grab a bottle of water, you get. So, women's football. Of course, you already know, if you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, anywhere, you know I love football, generally. I started watching women football in 2010. That was the first time. Yeah, so that was the first time the under 20, yeah, Nigeria under 20 made it to the final of the under 20 World Cup. Um, I can't remember who we lost to, but yeah, that was the first time. So I think that year also, the Super Falcons, I think it was that year, I think the Super Falcons also won a title, I can't remember, or maybe Ghana beat Nigeria. I think it was Ghana because the winner of the women football of the year came from Ghana. Yeah, so it's Ghana. Then I became actively interested in women's football in 2014. So again, it was under 20. Nigeria got another final of under 20. I think that that was when Asisa Toshuala broke out. Yeah, so Asisa Toshuala, Poranozi, those the set of players. Um, we made it to the final. Germany beat us in the final. That match was was very interesting. Germany beat us in extra time. There was a lot of debate about how Asisa Shola was a selfish player because there was so there was a time when Nigeria supposedly would have scored. The ball had crossed the line. Then Asisa Shola kicked it into the net. Now the problem is if she did not kick it, the ball would have stood as a goal. But she kicked it from an offside position. So the goal was ruled out, and it was after then that Germany scored. It was yada yada yada. Anyway, now what made it interesting was that that under twenty in 2014, uh, some people went to like the major World Cup in FIFA 2015, right? So there are different cadres of women competitions, such as under 17, just like the way we have the male version. So under 17, under 20, then the general World Cup. So yeah. The women went to, so I saw Shola, like three or four other people went to the next World Cup. I was in uni then. I cannot remember what level, but I know I was in uni and I know that I watched the match. The first match, Super Falcons match was Nigerian Sweden. And it was very interesting because I think Sweden was like the fourth or fifth ranked nation in the world around that time. And Nigeria was now number 50 something or so. So, yeah. So people, Nigeria was in a group with USA, Sweden, and I don't know if it's a Korea Republic or a Korea, I don't know South Korea or Korea Republic. And people are like, ah, they will beat Nigeria, just the way they said last year. They will beat Nigeria, they will beat Nigeria 5-0, they will beat Nigeria 8-0. So the first match was Nigeria versus Sweden. It was in the midnight, I can never forget. So Sweden, of course, scored first. They scored second, so they beat us 2-0. Then coming to second half, Nigeria scored one back. Then I just got another one back. So two, two, everybody was wild, up super falcons, right? And I just got another one. And then they started playing Nigeria, like played, they played the life out of Nigeria. And then out of the blues, I think it was Rita Chikolo. I can't remember very vividly. Is that Rita Chikolo under that midfield? I can't remember. Picked this very brilliant pass. So I see Oshola, I like, I saw just dribble the defender and scored. And they were like, yeah, Nigeria, of Super Falcons. You know, and we played 3-3. Three, three. I mean, the sad part was that we lost 2-1 to USA. And I think we lost 1-0 to the Korea. I hope I'm correct. I think it's the Korea. And then we crashed out of the group stage as, as usual. I wanted to say as usual, but yeah. But it was really just fascinating that Super Falcons went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best, I mean, just to, for context, Sweden made made it to the semi-finals in that competition, so just to know how strong they were. And so that was really where I was like, yeah, I'm going to start watching this thing. And so I started following women football, 
around that time also, I saw Charlotte was playing with Liverpool. I don't know if it was Liverpool or Arsenal, but she was one of Nigerians' biggest exports when it comes to like football because other Nigerian players were playing in different clubs. France, uh, Okwanoze was in Lyon, you know, Greece, just different clubs, but nobody had played in the WSL. And it was just fascinating to see Nigerian play. WSL is Women's Super League. That's the female version of English Premiership, right? So, like, top flight women football. And so, Sasha Shola was playing there. Yeah, it was Arsenal. She went for Liverpool, went to Liverpool, then from Liverpool to Arsenal, or Arsenal to Liverpool, I can't remember. Anyway, what I do remember is that the inaugural, the inaugural BBC Football of the Year was won by Sasha Shola. Yes, you can Google it. BBC Football of the Year, the first person to win the first edition was Sasha Shola. So, like, it was exciting. Like, in Nigeria, he's doing very well and all that. The next major competition I will be watching was under 20, FIFA under 20. Um, yeah, so again, Nigeria came to shine as usual. That was the set of Ashida Jibade. I think we crashed out in the quarterfinals or semi. No, no, it was quarter, it wasn't semis. But it was also exciting the fact that like Nigeria just came to play and played well in a very difficult team. I think that we beat France. I can't remember. I know that we beat an European team in our goal, but it was just exciting. I'm like, do you know what? There is something here. So I started watching female football, started following clubs, Barcelona. Of course, I supported Chelsea. So started following the club football, started learning about different leagues, women, Bundesliga, D1 Akema. D1 Akema is a female female league in Union. Um, from Bundesliga, that's like women Bundesliga in Germany. Just, it was just exciting to start following um, women football. And, you know, we are here today. Why am I interested in women football and why am I now invested? Because before I was interested, now I am invested. It's simple. You already know that I'm an SDG5 advocate, right? Um, I support anything women. And as an HR professional, one of the things that I'm very concerned about, aside like career progression, I want to see more women in management level, I want to see more women in c suits. I'm also very concerned about functional equality. What do I mean by functional equality? It means that I want to see more female engineers. I want to see more female backend engineers, more female designers, more female front end. And one of the most exciting campaigns I think I've worked on as an HR professional was, shout out to Kari Weiss, right? Um, was the Design Front for Women campaign, you know, launched by Ferry and Alma and Oye, and you know, the amazing people that worked on that project. I like, why, why we, as a day, why did we launch the project? It was because for every role that we put out, we five guys applied to one lady. It wasn't, that data was not manufactured. That was the HR, right? So it was the data that we were seeing. Like, if we put a role out for designers, like 50 guys applied to like five ladies, right? So I'm very concerned about functional equality. I'm very concerned about wage parity. That's like, you know, wage equality. And we cannot say that women should earn what men are earning if the women's sport is not making what men's sport are making. For example, there is a name, if you watch tennis, you probably know this. There's a woman called Billie Jean King. She was the one that fought for equality in tennis, right? Um, she led it, she championed a campaign that ensured that male Grand Slam winners and female Grand Slam winners, the students now, end the same amounts. But it, it was, I, I don't want to say it was pretty easy, but it was easy because there is some same level of visibility in that sport, right? Ticket is the same. People pay 100 pounds to, or 200 pounds to watch a Grand Slam. Either it's Australian Open, either it's French Open, whatever Grand Slam it is. Tennis has grown a lot, right? You cannot compare like the growth in tennis to the growth in football. I mean, till for context, till 1971, female football was banned in England. That means women could not explicitly play football in England. That's how backward, you know, the fo football was. And now we are making a lot of progress. So why am I interested in female football? Because we need more awareness to generate interest. We need more interest to generate um, income, for lack of a better word. We need more people to buy tickets to go and watch the matches so that there will be more revenue for the clubs. We need more complaints to sponsor Women World Cup so that a lot more money will be generated. And all this will not happen. So it's like interest then commitment of resources, then wages. For example, if people are not watching women football, we cannot ask women to earn the same amount that, you know, the men are earning. So it's simple. 
I want to create more awareness. I want people to have more interest. I want people to see how exciting women football is and, you know, how exciting the beautiful game of football is and have vested interest in it. That's, that's why I'm interested. Um, what projects am I working on? Uh, yeah, so I started writing, actively writing for women football blogs in 2022. So a blogger tweeted, the name of the blog is now Impetus. It was then Impetus, now it's Impetus 71. Um, there was a major, <laughs> right? So they had tweeted that they are looking for an African writer, someone to cover African football. And again, remember how I started, I started by watching Nigerians in the world, right? So I reached out you know, to say, hey, you know, my name is Man of Faith, I went through, no, they didn't actually tweet. I sent them a DM, I could mail them. I, had, I don't know, I stumbled, maybe I tweeted something about Nigerian or African player. So I think they liked my tweet. You know how Twitter works, I got with them. Actually, I got to their page. I saw what they were doing and I went to their DM. I saw that they didn't write about African football. They were covering a lot of football and Impetus has a wide range, like all, Australia, English, D1 Akema, France, Germany. But they were not covering everything, anything in Africa. So I sent them a DM to say, hey, you know, my name is Emmanuel Faith. I'm a football lover from Africa. I would love to write about African football on your platform. And I'm like, oh, why not? And so I started, you know, I started with WAFCON 22, wrote a lot of articles. And then when the season, that's like the normal season started, I began to like write about Africans in Europe and things like that. Uh, Impetus is owned by an Australian, like the editor in chief is an Australian who lives in London. So that means that they have like an arm in Australia and an arm in London. And so as the team expanded and evolved, my scope of work also expanded and evolved. And then in 2023, I started writing a lot of ESL because I support Chelsea, which is how I also got my second gig. So I currently write for a magazine called King's Miado Magazine. It's the official magazine for Chelsea women. So if you want to read about Chelsea women in London right now, you have to buy a copy of King's Miado Magazine, right? And how did they happen? Kings Miado reached out to Impetus that they needed someone to write about Chelsea women. And because I was the only Chelsea fan on the team at that time, the editor-in-chief reached out to me to say, hey, do you want to write about this? And the article I wrote was so good that the editor-in-chief of Kings Miado magazine reached out to me and said, please, can you continue to write for us? We really love your article. And so that's how I started. So now I write for Impetus 71 the London arm and then I write for King's Miado magazine. To be honest with you guys, I've not shot my shots in a while because I've been focused on like my HR career. But my long term plan one is to write for like CNN, The Athletic, um, you know, just very big guys. And also to, you know, one day be an invited guest at Barclays Studio or Super Sports Studio just talking about women football. Another project I'm working on right now is February. I founded February with my friends Cornelius Ashley Uzuzuka and Dami. We, Fevera also started the same way, again, interest awareness. The FIFA Women's World Cup was coming and wanted to like start conversation with Nigerians. I now remember, there was one, one <laughs> God, I just remember. There was this guy, the video trended a lot. Um, he was talking down on Super Falcons. He was like, Super Falcons will never make it out of the group. This is this, da da da. They will beat Super Falcons. Super Falcons have lost all their matches. Let me tell you that Super Falcons is one of the seven countries that have qualified for every World Cup. So since the Women World Cup started, there are only seven countries. Imagine all the countries in the world. There are only seven countries that have qualified for all the editions, and Super Falcons is one of them. Is that not amazing? Please clap for Super Falcons. Anyways, so there was this guy that had recorded, he had just talked down, and we're like, no, this is nonsense. We have to write, we have to let this guy know that what he said is nonsense. So we decided to write an article on why we think that Super Falcons can actually make it out of the group, right? We also wrote about how they should play. And Super Falcons made it out of the group. They even beat the host country by three goes to two. So, yeah, how did I get there again? Yeah, I was talking about Fevora. So, um, we founded a brand, Fevora, we tell... We are focused on telling the stories of African players. Another interesting fact, do you know that the most expensive woman footballer right now is an African? Yeah. And the next most expensive football player is also an African. No, it's not as So the most expensive player right now, as I thought I'm shooting this video because I did not know what will happen by the time this video goes live. Her name is Rachel Kodanaji. She's one of the top strikers in Africa. She's Zambian. Um, she was one of the top 10 highest goal scorers last year. 
And yeah, that's even another fact. Do you know that the highest goal scorer in the world globally in 2023 is an African? Her name is Temwa Chawinga. She plays for Malawi. And so you just have all these exciting things coming out of Africa and nobody's spotlighting us. That's why we decide to, you know, find favor. So please follow, follow when you see this YouTube video, I don't know if it'll be on TikTok by then. But right now we are on Twitter and we have a medium post. So please follow us. Um, what else am I supposed to say about women football? I feel like this video is already like 25 minutes long. Anyway, I think that I've talked to you guys through how I got into women's football, um, why I'm very interested in women's football. I'm focused on gender wage parity. And if there is no revenue, there cannot be income. We cannot say that women footballer should earn as much as men footballer if women football is not generating the same income. I mean, one of the best news that happened in 2023 was that um, the FIFA president said that women football generated about $570 million which is like at the group stage so the amount that fifa had spent to organize the tournament they made the money back before the end of the group stages that means that they probably made more than enough profits because there was second round quarter finals semi-finals finals i can't wait to see what happens in olympics and i am super excited about fifa world cup 2020 2027 by god's grace i shall be there live in the name of Jesus, fire. My passport will be stamped. Amen. Um, I have left the trenches. So I'm still in the trenches. God have mercy on me. Yes, so that's my interest. If you have any other question you want to ask me, um, please ask in the comment section. Also, please follow Fevora. You can tweet at us. Yeah, if there are other questions after watching this video, I would put sweet um, Fevora link on there. If there are other questions you have, Fevora is looking to write like informative articles, educative articles, just telling people about women football. In fact, right now, well, as at the time I record this video, we are working on publishing an African report. Just a report telling the exploits of what African women did globally in 2023. So yeah, please follow us, follow February, you know, bet on our brand, invest in us. We are looking for money. But right now, don't worry. We are looking to like tell exciting stories. But right now, just follow us, ask us questions. We are always online. Always have to answer your question. Either I'll be a tweet or a medium post. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, I think that that's all about women football. And... Thank you for watching. Uh, for for the, the next video, you probably watch will be about HR or career or something. But yeah, I'm really glad that I got to talk about women football in front of the camera. And please, again, if you have connect at the top, please. I want to write for CNN, BBC, ESPN, all these big guys. But I'm too lazy to reach out to them. So if you know someone I can shoot a direct shot at, as against shooting a shot at the organization, I will appreciate it. So the next time I sit in front of my camera to record a, to record a YouTube video with love. Emmanuel Fitz.